I lied. Krabs is not Turing complete. Well, not yet. You see, for something to be Turing complete, it has to have infinite memory. And Krabs just doesn't have that. Sure, the world is infinite in Krabs, but everything has to be done with blocks, and blocks can't move. So by the formal definition, Krabs is not Turing complete. So the things you make in it are just finite state machines. They don't have infinite memory, they have finite memory. Now something that is Turing complete would be Conway's game of life. Because not only can you make gliders and glider guns, but you can also make things that replicate those glider guns. And you can make replicators that replicate themselves. The fact that you can do that means that it has infinite memory. So with an infinite world, Conway's game of life is Turing complete. With an infinite world, Krabs is not. But recently, I took Krabs one step closer to being truly Turing complete. Now before I continue, a lot has changed since my last video. So we now have frozen crabs, so they're just crabs that are a little bit darker than all of the others, and they're frozen in time. If I go up here and press play, you can see that these crabs are moving just fine, but I go down here, and these ones are completely frozen. You can also see that in the statistics panel which I've added recently, the total number of crabs does not take into account frozen crabs. If I spawn in some crabs here, the number will go up, but if I freeze them, you'll see it goes back down. The purpose of this is basically so that I can have a lot of different things in one crab map, but I can just work on one at a time. Because I don't want all these things down here running while I'm working on something else. I've also added a lot of quality of life features, like you can now select the whole map, and it says selecting everything. And there are tons of other things, but it's just too much to list. Okay, now I'm going to show you the final thing, which is some blocks that I've added. So, these are the usual blocks in crabs, and they're the only ones that I ever use. But actually, there have been other blocks in crabs the entire time, I've just never used them. So we've also got the anti-rotator, which rotates a crab the opposite way, so it just rotates it left. To do this before, I would have just made a rotator like that, because the crab goes up into it, hits the blue block and goes left. But now, there's this block. I just don't use it because I feel like it makes it easier, and I don't want it to be any easier than it already is. But if you're playing crabs and you do want it to be easier, just press 6 on your keyboard and it'll spawn one of these. The next block is the destroyer, which when any crab goes into it, you'll never guess what happens, it gets destroyed. So. Um, the way I do this with the first three blocks is I just make a crab bin. So all of these blocks, well, almost all of these blocks, can be recreated with the first three. So that's why I try to avoid using any of these other ones. Now the next block is the extender. So the extender, when you put a crab through it, just resets the lifespan. So you'll see that once it goes to the top here, it's 47. When it goes in here, it will say 49, it's actually 50. So when it goes to the next tick, you'll see it is still 49. This one I don't use because I just feel like, again, it makes it easier and I don't want it to be easier. This one can be recreated using any of the repeater designs using the first three blocks. Now the last block I've added is sort of the point of the entire video. It's the mover block. This one is completely different from all the others because it cannot be recreated with the original three blocks. It's impossible. So this one actually does add a feature to the game. Now let me just demonstrate what this actually does. I'm going to put some blocks at the top so you can see where my camera is in relation to them. Now I'm going to put a crab on the left here and it's going to go to the right. And then in the next tick, the block moved. Now that's sort of the entire premise of this block, it's called a mover because it moves. But not only that, it moves other blocks as well. So let me repeat that with another crab. And you can see that this block moves as well because it's touching the mover. Now this is not infinite, it cannot pull everything along with it. It has a limit of two blocks in every direction, but it uses von Neumann neighbors, not more neighbors, so it only uses the four neighbors directly next to it. So for example, you could put three blocks up here, put a crab here, and it's only going to move two of them. You can see that this one just stays exactly where it is. Now the way to get around this is to put another mover. So I'm going to replace this block with a mover, and then put two more above. And you can see that when the crab goes through, it sort of resets the limit. So because this move is here, it allows it to pull along these as well. So you can 
using an infinite number of movers, you could move an infinite number of blocks. But this block is so important because it brings crabs one step closer to being Turing complete. Because being able to move blocks is the first step towards being able to fully manipulate them. For crabs to be Turing complete, I have to be able to create and destroy blocks using only crabs. So it's still looking pretty difficult so far and there's a lot I have to think about, but this is showing me that it's definitely possible. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe to stay up to date with all of this. And next time, I'm gonna talk about this thing up here. So stay tuned for that video because it's gonna be a complicated one.